Mark started his gospel with the beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. This is the beginning. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ. It's the beginning of the good news of God for you and me. It is the good news that this dark wilderness of life is not where we have to stay forever. It's the good news that death does not have the final word. It's the good news that there is meaning and purpose in life. It is the good news that God, who has created all of this universe, is real. And that God is incredibly concerned for human beings. God loves human beings. God cares about the difficulties that we face. God cares deeply and compassionately about those of us who hunger and thirst for something more than what this lost and sinful world offers. God cares about what is laying heavily on our hearts and our minds. God cares deeply about those of us who are depressed, overwhelmed, underemployed, hopeless, helpless at the end of our roads. Walking in the darkness, the lostness, the lonely, seemingly endless wilderness, God sent John the Baptist into the wilderness of hopeless humanity to announce the good news. Look, I am sending my messenger before you. He will prepare, the, prepare your way. A voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. So John in the wilderness, he was in the wilderness of human despair, calling for people to be baptized, to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. And then we are told that everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. That's a lot of hungry people. That's a lot of folks starving and searching, needing good news in this lost and broken wilderness of the world. We are no different than they were some 2,000 years ago. Everyone at every time has needed the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news that God so loved the world. Where will we be without it? I will be lost and empty. I don't even know if I would have made it this far. I need Jesus every moment of every day. I need the church all the time. I need y'all. And I thank God for y'all. I don't do well in the dark and dangerous, rocky, bumpy wilderness of life without Jesus Christ. People die in the wilderness when they are out there lost and exposed by themselves. That is why John came to the wilderness in order to prepare people for God's greatest entrance. As John was baptizing folks who were desperately wanting to change their hearts and lives and wanting God to forgive their sins, he announced to them, One stronger than me is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to bend over and loosen the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Then we are told that about that time, Jesus came up from Nazareth of Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. This is one of the most radical things ever. Think about it for a second. The one through whom the world came being, God himself, decided to come down into our wilderness as a human being. And rather than deciding to set apart some pedestal way up above the rest of us sinners, 
He takes part of the same baptism as us in Jesus. God decides to identify with human beings, with you and me. Without a bunch of fanfare, without a parade, without CNN or Fox News covering the event, without applause, bright lights, or loud music, without all the trappings that go along with narcissism and egos. Jesus goes down into the muddy water of the Jordan River along with a whole bunch of human sinners, desperate, helpless folks, and is baptized with all the rest. And in doing so, God shows God's humility. God shows God's solidarity with you and me, with every human being who has ever lived. Could there be any better news? One thing we see through the entire New Testament is that Jesus never asked us to do anything that he was not willing to do himself. During his lifetime on earth, Jesus was tempted every way that we are, but without sin. During his time on earth, Jesus battled the wild beast of the wilderness. The devil who prowls around like a lion looking to devour us all. And Jesus defeated him. Jesus is our trailblazer. Jesus is our example to live by. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Jesus is our salvation. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. We are told that while Jesus was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw the heavens splitting open and the Spirit like a dove coming down on him. And there was a voice from heaven, You are my Son, whom I dearly love, and you I find happiness. We are told that as soon as Jesus was baptized, at once it says, the Spirit forced Jesus into the wilderness. And in the wilderness, he was tempted by Satan. He was among the wild animals. Truly, this is the beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ. Jesus spends all the days and years that follows his baptism living out what it means to be God's dearly loved son. Jesus gives everything he is and everything that he has for the sake of saving of humankind. He takes his place with hurting human people, folks like you and me, our neighbors next door, even our enemies around the globe and in the halls of our school. And doing so, Jesus stirs up the demons and incites the authorities, those who lust for power and control, to start plotting his death. During the week before his he was crucified, the leaders of the temple challenged Jesus. By what authority are you doing these things, they ask. And Jesus answered them with a reference to his baptism. Was the baptism of John the Baptist from heaven or not? I was baptized. That's why I do these things. So Jesus doesn't die of old age. He dies because he takes his baptism seriously. For his baptism is his commission to ministry. When Jesus cries on the cross, it is finished. It is his baptism that is finished. In Mark chapter 10, when two of Jesus' disciples asked Jesus, Allow one of us to sit on your right and the other on your left when you enter your glory. Jesus replies, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup I drank or receive the baptism I received? We can, they answer. You will drink the cup I drink and receive the baptism I received, Jesus says to them. Now what I'm trying to get at here is that our baptism, now remember 
John said that Jesus will baptize us with the Holy Spirit. Our baptisms are not just a one-time deal over a water basin or in, even in a river. That is just the beginning. Our baptism is something that, if we take it seriously, continues for our entire lives. It is God saying to us, you are my child. And it is our decision to live that out. It is our decision to die to self with Christ so that we may be raised to new life in Christ. It is our decision to give our lives for the sake of God and others. It is our decision to live for something greater than money, something greater than power, something greater than politics, something greater than celebrity, something much, much greater. It is our decision to tell the truth in a world that lies, give in a world that takes, love in a world that lusts, Make peace in a world that fights. Serve in a world that wants to be served. Pray in a world that wants to be entertained. And take chances in a world that idolizes safety. It's our decision to live a life which financial success is not the final goal. Security it's not the highest good. And sacrifice for the sake of mercy and compassion is a daily event. It is our decision to be saved from self, hell, and the devil. It is our decision to live in the wilderness, but not to be lost in the wilderness. It is our decision to live this life in the wilderness, for our mortal bodies to die in the wilderness, but to live the immortal life forever with Jesus. It is our decision to live out the baptism of Jesus and to drink of his cup. Now most of us have been baptized. And if we are walking with Christ, our baptism is something which is occurring continually every moment of every day. When we are baptized with water by a preacher, we are professing our identity as people for whom Christ died. We are professing our faith. We are publicly acknowledging God's love for us and Jesus Christ. In our lifelong process of living as saved persons, in the wilderness of this world. May you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.